Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel and a big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining us here. Um, well, we wrapped up the uh, Johnson 89-2004-30 horsepower. I've got it outside now, and I am just jonesing. You understand to take it for a boat ride but I got a couple of things that I was trying to do but when it's blowing 60 miles an hour snow sideways and the temperatures are down to single digits you just have to wait it out so anyway just waiting for a Another good day or two like them 60 degree temperatures we had a week ago. I do wish more of that would roll around and hit you on a stand. But it has not. Instead it's been cold, blowy, and snowing and it's supposed to do that up around 40 miles an hour for the next couple of days. So, but never fear. We've got outboard stuff to do. And um, another project, project another project that I want to get to is my Mercury 1983 50 horsepower classic I want to do a similar or attempt to do a similar uh, mod that I did on that 70 horsepower Mercury which is to put tilt trim on it and uh, now that's a whole different setup on them older ones that have the twin piston rams out on the side. But I think we can do it, by Joe. So, I've been wanting to do that. Well, in order to do that, i got to take it off the boat. And so what I was thinking is, I don't like the idea of my boat sitting out there without no power on it, you understand? Because I might get that good weather pop in here and I want to go for a boat ride. So, I thought, well, I'll take one of my Yamaha Enduros, which I've also been kind of jonesing to uh, try them out. If you've watched several videos back, I did a couple of 40 horsepower Yamaha Enduros. And I've been wanting to get them out for a run, so I thought, take the 50 off, put the Enduro on, and my boat will be ready. If I get a nice day, I can hop in it and run this Yamaha. Same thing with the 30 Johnson and the electric start and all that. I, I want to take it because we modded it with a different car, different flywheel. I still don't know if it's going to work right. So I want to get it out in the water. But, so I got started to doing that. And I brought one of the 40 Enduros in here and uh, got it started up. You'll see that process. And darn if I didn't find, I, I, I was looking at it as it was running, you know, I just have a habit of just looking all over the motor, make sure everything's good, and looking for that creepy crawly, what's going to crawl out of there and get me. So I was looking at it and I saw water dripping down out from under the cow pan. That ain't supposed to happen. So I said, hmm. And I got the flash lit, and I started litting all over in there and everything, and I, I saw there's water coming out from under the power head where the power head goes to the base, to the leg. There's water coming out from under there, and I'm going to try and show you that with the camera and flashlights, and maybe you might be able to see it.
before I forget, I have to welcome all you folks to a brand new year. It's 2022. Can you believe it? 2022. Man. Well, I just want to say welcome to this new year. I hope we have a good outboard season and we get a lot of unique stuff and mods and who knows. Because you never know what's going to walk through that little door. So, I hope we have a good 22 season. And uh, before I forget, a couple of my friends wanted to say a little something to you about 22 as well. You understand us. Well, hello there, boys and girls, it's me, Trader Jim. Yeah, I'm the best trader in the whole North Territories. Yeah, you might know my, my cousin, Billy Ray, third connected. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a brand new year, so I just thought I'd stop in here. You know, say hi to old Cody Bass. You never know what I might be able to swindle, I mean, trade with that guy. <laughs> so, uh, it's a brand new year, 2022. So, I need to find that Cody Bass. See what I can suck out of, trade him out of, you know. So, uh, yeah, I just want to say, let's have a good year, yeah. in the whole North Territory. I finally came in out from the ocean, delivered my load of suckerhead pinch cod. I just came down here to stop in and see that, that KGB Cody Bass. It's a whole new year. It's 20s, 20s too. And I'm going to keep my eye on him. I'm going to keep my eye on you. While I'm going to be watching, I'm going to be looking around, sniffing around. I'm going to check on you in 22. I'll be watching. And I'm telling you what, you better make it a good 22. Yeah. You better make it a good 22, or I'm going to fix you, and I'll fix you right. Ah! <laughs> 
Okay, what I did um, and what I'm doing is to remove the power head, I'm going to lower you down some. There's not very much on these Enduros you have to take off. I unscrewed a 10 millimeter bolt here and a 10 millimeter bolt here that takes the throttle linkage off. And then I took a set of these little baby, make sure you're in there all the way. Um, I took a small pair of vice grip, needle nose vice grips, and I clamped it all together before I took the this main bolt that holds all this your cables together for your throttle linkage. So there's a little tip there with that with them needle nose. That'll hold that all there for you. Because that has to come off. Then I took the pink and yellow wire that goes to the low oil or over scent, uh, overheat alarm. I think it's the this was I think originally a VRO motor. So that would have been your low oil light or whatever, but it's a pink and yellow wire behind this box. So I took this cover off here, four Phillips screws, and uh, then I took off the telltale hose that comes from the other side. And the only other thing that you have to take off from the other side is the fuel line coming in from the quick connect to the fuel filter. That's it. And then under the bottom of the power head, um, we have eight 12 millimeter bolts, power head bolts. Those will come off. Oh, the kill switch. The kill switch I just took and took the plastic nut off. You can unhook it like that, or you can unhook it from the white and black wires uh, at this box as well. So, I just took that little nylon plastic nut off, so that'll come off with the power head. Um, that should be it, I believe, other than the uh, 12 millimeters. Okay, let me get you back up here. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So I will have to get up under hell and get these ones. There's a one. I'm over here. I'm over here. You can see me. Two. Well, that one's a little toy yet. There we go. Oh, still got one on the other side. It's, you know, little bit of a booger. Let me get to my old Milwaukee thing. Thing a -ling. Maybe it has a better charge in it. I think that's what's going on. Let me try it. If not, I'll have to get a bigger socket or something. There she comes. It's just being a pickle. Let's see. Let's take. I think I'll save that one for last. This one we don't want to go all the way out with just yet. Whoops, which I just about did. Right. 
I don't want that foul head to come toppling, toppling off of there. You understand? But, let's see. I'm down. You go down. Okay. Okay. I don't think I have to worry about that. I put enough goopum sticky on it. Get right up on the hand, up on the hand. See if I can get some level edge. Not so good over there. Probably over here. some goo on that puppy. <laughs> I heard it go there. So I can take that bolt completely off of there now. Rip rip. There's the last one right there. Let me try another thicker one. We popped it like a teenage pimple, by goodness. I think I did it. I think the old crowbars did it. Now, the question is, the question, or is it the answer? Anyway, did I unhook everything? Did I unhook it all? Let's see. Gosh! Oh, Still, I want to come off. Hey, Joe! I must have unhooked everything, I would say. Yes, it's heavy. Now, I'm going to show you. See all the goo? See this gasket? I shouldn't have reused it. Look at it. It's pathetic. But, since I got it off, I'll clean it. I'll clean it. I'll do my job right this time. Now, some people might say, they might say, you wasted a lot of time. You didn't do the job right in the first time. And to that, I'd say you are correct. But, unlike some people, I don't mind playing inside my outboards. I like to play around in the outboards. Yeah. So it seemed to be... It's weird because it seemed to be... No, I guess... Yeah. Heck, I don't know. But it was leaking all... Of, Round, see there would be that bolt. Yeah, it was leaking right in there, it seemed like. Either way, we're gonna clean that up inside there a lot better. See if we can't do a bit, bit, bit better job. I'll be back. There's what the underside looks like. Pathetic, pathetic. Oh, I put some goo on there. But I must not put it in the right places. So we'll clean all this up. Yes, we will. And 
we'll do it a little better job. I really don't remember the gasket looking, you know, that bad. But boy, it sure does. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going for the... Oh, well. Hey. Sometimes, you know. But I'll clean both of them all up. I'll be back. Okay, so all I did for cleaning this up was took this guy here, scraper, scraped off the, the big chunks. Then I took this guy here. Wire brush. And I hit it with that. And then I went over it with some fine emery cloth. And I do it laying down on the side that you see here because that, this, you want to put some paper or something in there. Because that is your lower cylinder and piston right there. And you don't want all this yuck you're scraping off to get up into your pistonus. Your pistionus. You want to stun us. Now, I got the new gasket here. And it goes like this. Okay? Now you can see they got that white stuff. You see the goo. It's the heat up goo. But it's not everywhere. But it's where it needs to be as far as water flow, I guess. But what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put any on the white stuff. But I'm going to take some of this Aviation Permatex. And I'm going to put just a little around these corners and such. Mainly so it sticks down. Um, like I said, whoops, don't put it on the white. Just on the corners that don't have anything. And I'm going to do that just to help it stick in place. I'm going to put it there and then let it dry for half an hour or so. Because when you're putting these power heads down there, if you ain't got a hoist and all that good stuff, you, uh, you tend to scoot these gaskets around. So I'm just going to, wherever there ain't no white, put a little stick on there to help me help it stick on there. But yeah, you want to scrape all this mess off and everything with the power head kind of in that position where your exhaust ports for your lower cylinder and your piston up in there don't get no yuck in there. And so clean that up real good. Now, let's go over here and look at this. Okay. Hopefully you can see. I'll make it where you can see. Yeah, now don't that look a lot better? And I put some anti geese on here and some on my shift link and stuff. In fact, I got a little hair, something there. But now we'll take this pretty gasket and use the guide pins. Don't that look so much better? And I put a little spray paint, a little Yamaha. On there. I don't know if this is the color it's supposed to be, but it's close enough. It's Yamaha Metallic Blue Silver 1985 through 90. Well, this is an 88. So that ought to be the right one. 
I might put another coat on. But I'm going to let this dry for a bit, like I said, just to tack up and hold that in position for me when I try and put my uh, power head back on. I don't want this thing goofing all around. So that's what I'm going to do. Let that get a little sticky for about a half an hour. I'll be back. Okay, so we got that gasket tacked down. And uh, got the pan all cleaned up and spray painted up. Looking pretty good there. So now I also got the I've got the power head all straightened up, cleaned up, sanded up, look it up, goody up. So, what is the next step? Now what I did here was I put me a very thin coat of the Permatex high heat gasket sealer on top of the gasket. I had a sealer on the bottom but I didn't have nothing on the top so I decided I'm going to go ahead and, and I do this on most of my when I pull a power head off because this is your exhaust right here it gets really hot so I got anti-seize here, anti-seize on my shifter and then I put a thin coat of the Permatex high heat gasket goo there. So, I just wanted to show you that. And now, now, it's time, I think, i got mostly everything out to my way in here. Put him over there out my way. He's out my way. Out my way. Stay out my way. Okay, let's see what we got on the power head itself. I got that hose. Let me see if I can. There. That. Okay, oh gosh. I think it gained weight since a little while ago. Okay. Set that puppy there. Let's see if I can get a good sight picture on my shaft. We did it. And voila! There it is. Right there. All sitting down there nice and tight. So now we just have to put a few things back on. Yes, we do. Okay. So we got some wires, we got a yellow wire, and we got a pink wire. Ta-da! And we got the kill switch. So we take that plastic nut back off. Uh oh. Yeah, that's that's an easy peasy. Take the uh, choke thing off. I gotta do it anyway to get the choke back on there. This guy. I gotta, I gotta put that choke back on. And this will get my throttle cable back over here and help me with this stop switch. Oh, did I take the nut off? Did I? Yeah, I did. There. So, we got a plastic nut that goes on the stop switch. Let's put that back on, finger loose. Make sure we got it routed out of the way. Look 
looks like somewhere in there ought to work. Or even in there. I think there's better. There. And then there. And all this just jams up in this box here. There's a, a little cutout right there. See it? It's supposed to let me put this wire up in there. It's just a little rubber boot with a slice in it. There we go. Like that. That goes on there like that. And so I don't have to keep wrestling with it. I think I'll go ahead and put the top on there in a second. Or the cover to this. Okay. Okay. And they should go right about there. Alright, let me get this cover. That's the cover. So I can get these wires jammed back in there. There we go. And then that'll press there. Is that about all of them? I think it is. The overboard discharge. Stick it right back there where it's supposed to go. But my big old fat feelers. My feelers. I have to get the needle nose. Put that on. Okay, on this side over here you can't see it, but all I'm doing is hooking up this fuel hose to the fuel filter. That should be pretty straightforward. And I got one of these little cheesy wire clamps, but there that is. There that is. Okay, that's the only thing that goes there, really. And the link of chichiches, link of chichiches, link of chichiches, link of chichiches. So I take this screw out here, this bolt. Line that up there loosely. Loosely put that puppy in because we're still going to have to swing it to get this other. Take off my clamp and screw that in. And now my throttle cables are just about, just about, just about getting hooked up. Um, I find what I did, did. Oh, I know what I did with it. I know what I did, did it. There it is. There it is. A couple of 10 millimeters. There we go. There's my throttle working. Now my gasket fell off of this thing. That, that's just going to be easy. So now we got to put the uh, choke back in its slot. It's just, it's just a little, just a little flat piece of metal that goes in this little plastic choke handle. Ain't none to it. TNT. TNT. Ain't nothing to it. Well, I guess I should get a screw for this, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. So, which way? The round part goes down part. Alright. Yep, like so. Let me get this screw in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
There it goes. Gotta get it to drop down. Put my screw. What did I do with my other screw? Did I drop it on the floor? Okay. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, there it is. I dropped it on the floor. I'm always dropping them on the floor. Always dropping them on the floor. I got Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, almost in. Okay. There we go. And we got my gasket back on. Like so, like so. Stay, stay, don't fall, don't fall. Power head bolts, and you can see how white and powdery they look. Hopefully, you can. And I take my little, this is a fine wire wheel on this one. I've got a coarse. Uh, wire wheel on this bench grinder and on this one this is a fine wire wheel and I just took all of them this is the last one and get that mess off there if you don't have a bench grinder wire wheel then use uh, just a fine wire brush if you're a salty guy if you, if you operate in salt water Clean them up. So they look so pretty. And then I took my anthem season. And you can see all these got the goo on them. It got the goo. You put the goo. Let me put a little more on that one, I think. Put the goo on there. With the little anti seas anti geese. Um, I'm still here. Last one. Okay, now I don't want to torque these down just yet. I want to put them in there, you know, not finger tight, but just and as soon as I get a little resistance, I want to stop. And what I'm going to do right now let's go get me a cup of joe and uh after that i'm gonna make me a turkey sandwich and i'm gonna eat my turkey sandwich lunch and that'll let that set up for about a half an hour on that high heat gasket maker and i always like to do that put it in there let it set 35 45 minutes then come back torque it all the way down been sitting now for probably about two hours okay on these uh, bolts that hold the power head on these eight bolts up under here I torque them down to 20 foot pounds and then uh, after I take it out and run it and stuff like that I'll recheck the torque on them but I, I torqued it on there at 20 foot pounds per bolt so let's get this thing in the tank See if we got a leak stopped.
velocità. She's as dry as a popcorn fart. One thing I will say about these Enduros, and I've got two of them, and uh, they're both the same. The twin cylinder single carb Enduro Yamaha, um, they have a sound to them that I, I just love. Um, you probably can't tell it, you know, over a video camera and especially in my tank, but when you're out on the water with these things and you're cruising along, um, well, even when you're island, actually, they, they almost sound like a good old-school two-stroke dirt bike, like an old Yamaha two-stroker dirt bike that had the big expansion chamber exhaust. They just have that da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> they, they really sound torquey and, and powerful, and uh, they're good motors. I really like them. And so I'm happy to get this one all squared away. I will bring my other one in here. I found one of the uh, new old stock carbs that I knew I had. I just had to uh, locate it when I purchased one of the outboard shops that I had purchased. I got a, quite a bit of Suzuki and Yamaha stuff. Um, and I, I had some new old stock, still have some new old stock uh, Suzuki Caparepas and Yami Caparepas. And I knew I had one for a, a, a 40 Enduro. I just had to locate it. I did. So, um, hope you enjoyed this little power head popping back. And we got us a nice gasket. She's good and dry. No more leaking into the cow pan because you don't want that salt water getting all up in there. You understand. So, that's going to be a wrap on this one, as always. That's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.